Lockerware charms the United States. 10,000 kilometers to promote Busan. Grand dreams of a robot prodigy. Secret to safe hiking in New Zealand. The master of communication. Dreaming of becoming the second Michelle Wee. Hello, welcome to Going Global. I'm your host, Chong Se-mi. 100-year-old Man Kaur from India recently made waves after winning the 100-meter dash at the American Masters Games. She was deemed the winner as she was the only person in her age category. She also picked up gold medals at shot put and javelin. Apparently, she begins her day at 6 a.m. with a shower and some simple stretching. She's definitely a testament to the statement, age is but a number. Going Global brings you heartwarming stories, and here is the first one of the day. In the past, lockerware furniture was a common sight in Korean households. That's not the case these days, but a lockerware exhibition opened in the United States for the very first time. Let's take a closer look. This piece features the Shipjangseng, or the 10 traditional symbols of longevity. The low table glows under the gentle light. The pieces feature an unusual sparkle and a witty design. Visitors are unable to take their eyes off the graceful figures and the glow. It's a very simple uh, uh, piece of work, uh, very pure, very uh, with harmony, and uh, I like the contrast between uh, the mother uh, of pearl and uh, black. This is the first ever lacquerware exhibition in the United States. The exhibition features 30 pieces that combine the tradition and modernity. They're also restored by modern science. The exhibition has attracted more than 60,000 visitors since opening in April of this year. The visitors can see how lacquerware is made and preserved through a video. It's so beautiful and unusual and something totally new. And I think it's really, you can't tell how it's made just by looking at it. It's something that you kind of need to know about. The organizers are planning different programs for the upcoming Korean Day on the 25th. Moving on to our next story, a long journey across Russia to promote Busan as an international gateway city has come to a successful end. A major festival took place in St. Petersburg to commemorate the end of the journey. Let's find out more. Bustling with thousands of people, the park is holding various events related to Korea. This is the Busan Day Festival celebrating the successful end of the Eurasian Expedition's journey. Residents of St. Petersburg joined in by wearing hanbok, or Korean traditional costumes, and trying Korean cuisine. <laughs> the Eurasian Expedition was made up of 50 people, including Busan residents and university students, and its goal was to promote Busan as a major distribution center. The expedition left Busan by ship on July 16th, then continued its journey on the Trans-Siberian Railway from Vladivostok, passing by seven Russian cities before arriving in St. Petersburg. <laughs> 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 
During the journey, the members held various events promoting Busan as a major distribution center, fulfilling their roles as citizen diplomats. Busan aims to become the distribution hub of Northeast Asia and promote exchanges with Eurasia. Our next story takes us to the United States. There is a Korean boy whose passion for robots knows no bounds. His team even ranked second place at a recent global robot competition. Let's find out more. This young boy puts together various parts with simple tools. His deft hands quickly build a robot that's capable of picking up balls and tossing them into goals. This is a 14-year-old named Lee Young-min. For a middle schooler, Kyung Min, assembling robots is not just a hobby. His team ranked second place at an international robotics competition held in April this year that brought in 176 teams from all over the world. Having moved to the United States six years ago, Kyung Min has already expressed a talent for assembling robots. <laughs> He may be young, but he is tirelessly working toward a future he envisions for himself. Him and my students will be able to go into the university level and have a focus on maybe an engineering career. Kyungmin dreams of making robots for space exploration with his own hands. And his fearless pursuit of his goals will help him live out his dream. Moving on to our next story. Many people head out of a town and go hiking as a means of escape from the hustle and bustle of everyday life. Hiking may sound like a relatively easy activity, but it could lead to critical accidents. And that's why in New Zealand, there is safety education offer to hikers. Let's take a closer look. This is the Waitakere Ranges Regional Park, featuring cool streams and lush forests. Hikers carefully check maps, making sure they're on the right track. Yeah. We have more rain, the stream yeah. will be too dangerous. Yeah. You have to turn around, go back up the yeah, yeah, yeah. The wildlife here presents an excellent lesson on nature, one that cannot be taught with books. <laughs> Branches and leaves are used to build a makeshift shelter. In case something happens, hikers can take refuge in this manner. We were imagining someone was hurt, or someone was sick, or someone was hypothermic, very, very, very cold. Cold to the point they may be dying. Um, so this was an emergency shelter to help keep people alive and safe till morning. In New Zealand, hiking is the second most popular leisure activity after fishing. But it's also linked to numerous accidents in the mountains. Naturally, there's a need for safety education. Um, I think most of these people are, but just also um, making sure they know what to do if an emergency occurs, so that they can do it safely and so they can help search and rescue find them by doing the right things. In 2013, one sports organization began providing free hiking safety classes. The programs are diverse, and there's also a class for Asian sports enthusiasts who are not yet comfortable with the English language. A lot of incidences where 
search and rescue have had to rescue people of um, Chinese or Korean descent. Um, and a lot of that issue came about because of language or um, lack of knowledge. Or how do you ask for help? Um, what kind of trees or what kind of plants do you see in the outdoors? So we decided that we would provide the service. New Zealand's hiking culture promotes self-awareness for safety issues. It presents the proper way to enjoy and heal in nature. Our next story takes us to Canada. Now, Canada is home to people of many different ethnicities, and subsequently, there are times when communication becomes a problem. One Korean there dreams of a society where people can communicate through sign language. Let's take a listen to her story. People try making signs with their hands as shown in this picture. This is a class for learning sign language. I'm trying to change uh, people's paradigm, change people's perspective of what the deaf community is all about. And, you know, that we have a deaf community, we have a culture, we have a language. The organizer for this class is Korean curator Kim So-jin. Kim came to Canada when she was an adolescent and faced communication problems due to the language barrier. She also found out that more people than she thought couldn't communicate properly in the highly multicultural city of Vancouver. 같은 경우는 이 공간적인 언어이고 몸, 몸의 언어이기 때문에 어, 예술가들이나 교육자들이 어, 알면 되게 도움이 되지 않을까 하는 하는 생각에 Kim approached sign language not only as a means of communication but also as art. It took her one year to learn sign language and translate it into pictures. This is a country of free speech, and I think people should be more aware of more method of all communication. So, Kim plans to research other ways of conducting dialogue so that everyone can communicate freely. It's time for our last story today. It is no easy task to take part in at least 20 LPGA golf competitions and still go to classes at the same time every year. There is a Korean girl in Australia who intends on following golfer Michelle Wee's footsteps and excelling in both golf and studies. Let's take a closer look. Here's a sunny golf course. Tall and slim father and daughter head off with golfing equipment. The girl's fluid swing indicates hidden talent. She is 15-year-old Grace Kim. Grace began playing golf at the age of 10, comparatively later than her peers. However, she made a name for herself within five years, making good use of her tall height and her excellent flexibility. She won the annual Australia Junior Championships twice in a row, Australia's largest junior golf competition. I think, I think if Grace keeps developing the way she is, there's no doubt that she's got a talent to be a professional golfer. Grace stands out thanks to her innate talent and work ethic, but playing golf and keeping up with schoolwork at her age is no easy task. Her father feels bad for his young daughter. However, young Grace wants to be like pro golfer Michelle Wee and excel in both studies and golf. 
졸업하면서도 대학을 졸업했고 그 다음에 부상도 있었지만 그 중에서 어 제일 그냥 포기 안 하고 끝까지 한 해서 되게 저는 훌륭한 프로라고 봐요. Grace's endeavors to become a globally acknowledged pro golfer begins now. I hope you enjoyed today's stories on Going Global. An interesting story about a letter has come from Iceland. Rebecca Catherine Kadu Ostenfeld, a farmer in Bordalor, Iceland, received a very unique letter. Instead of an address, there was a map drawn on the envelope indicating where the recipient lived. The letter was posted from the capital city of Reykjavik, and marvelously enough, the Icelandic Postal Service delivered the letter accurately to Ostenfeld. It turns out that Ostenfeld had hosted a group of tourists at her farm, and one of them wanted to contact her but didn't know the address or even the name. Luckily, the sender's message got through and the story had a happy ending. Now, this may be an example of how heartfelt truth can reach out regardless of the hurdles in its way. Now, Going Global will be back next week with more exciting and interesting stories from all around the world. Thank you for watching.